Trinion Thompson and today I'm going to be reading from my book No Longer Human. So today I'm going to be reading first of all the short snippet at the beginning of my book, sort of the preface. Sort of like to entice you into reading the book because this little snippet is going to happen somewhere within it. And then I'm going to read the first chapter slash prologue, um, one human moment. So let's get started. No longer human. You think I'd be dead by now? Any normal person would be. Though the transformation carried on keeping me alive, my human body had shut down. But I felt every pinch, snap, crack, and even the agony of the elongating bones. I was trapped in my own body, with no control over what was happening to me. But that's the way it was during a first full moon. No control over that first transformation from human to beast. I wished I was dead. Rhea sat on a tartan blanket in the middle of the wild bluebells, just beyond the edge of her aunt and uncle's back garden under the shade of the forest trees. Rhea scribbled down each detail of the water droplet covered bluebell that stood before her. The summer air was warm, but as the day drew to a close, as dusk drew in, the air grew cold, and Rhea could feel it. She gathered her pencils and sketchbook and packed them into her small bag. She then rolled up the blanket. Rhea's chocolate brown hair with natural copper highlights darkened as the sun vanished behind the trees. Darkness grew through the forest, nearing the edge as Rhea turned to step over the wall of wildflowers that divided the garden and the forest. Ever since Rhea could remember, she was never allowed to go beyond the edge of the garden after dark. Her father, aunt and uncle always told her never to venture into the forest. They never explained why, but Rhea was a child who, though listened, would just push a little. So she would sit at the edge to draw, watch and listen to the wildlife of the English countryside. As Rhea lifted her foot to step over the wall of wild flowers, she stopped and looked up into the trees. There was no evening bird song. The forest was a dead silence. Rhea curiously looked back into the forest's evening darkness as the ice-cold chill of being watched crept up her spine. Rhea squinted as she noticed something and then turned to stand up straight as whatever she'd seen vanished. Suddenly, Rhea jumped as the dogs within the house burst into barking chaos. As Rhea jumped, the blanket fell out from under her arm. She exhaled and inhaled as she slowed her pulse from the surprise of the barking dogs. She bent down and grasped the soft blanket, but before she could get to her feet, she froze as in the corner of her eye she saw burning ember sparks she'd noticed only moments before. Slowly, as her heart began to race again, she turned her head to face an ember-eyed wolf. Its white fangs bared, oil black fur, three scars down the left side of its face, and two more scars down its back right leg. The scarred wolf snarled aggressively, and Rhea felt the air turn to ice, sharp in her throat and lungs, making it hard to control her breathing. A calmer, rumbling growl came from behind her. Rhea closed her eyes and then reopened them as she turned to see a second wolf behind her, both bigger than the average fully grown grey wolf. The second wolf was honey brown. It acted more proud than defensive. It didn't bear its fangs nor lower its head, but the fear that they would attack lingered in Rhea's mind. Rhea's grip on the blanket tightened. As it did, the scarred wolf snapped its jaws. Rhea jolted, losing her balance and falling onto her back. Quickly, she propped herself up so not to be pinned down. As soon as she'd dropped, the scarred wolf lunged, grabbing the blanket, ripping it up and then throwing it out of the way. The wolf started to approach Rhea. Once more, Rhea froze as the wolf drew closer. But before the scarred wolf could lunge again, a younger jet black wolf brushed against Rhea's left arm and circled round to the front of her with a calm growl. The younger wolf approached the honey coloured one while the scarred wolf snarled viciously at the younger one. The honey brown wolf sniffed the younger one and then growled at the scarred one. Slowly, the scarred one stepped back. The younger wolf approached Rhea, 
sniffed the air around her, looked back to the honey-coloured one, and then turned back to Rhea. A growl rumbled deep within the throat of the scarred wolf. The younger one bared its teeth, about to attack. Another rumble echoed from the scarred one. Without warning, both wolves attacked, colliding as they leapt for Rhea. Rhea's eyes clamped shut as the white, hot pain inflamed her right wrist. Her hair threw back and she cried out in agony. In my last video I said I would be talking about the concept idea of my werewolves. Uh, this is because if, if you know me then you know that I absolutely love werewolf books, werewolf movies and the whole concept behind them. I'm quite picky on my werewolves and how they look. I will be doing a video about this in my on my other channel um, but that's much later on, it's not yet. In No Longer Human I went with a wolf. They look like wolves but they're just slightly bigger. The reason behind this, as you will find out going into the series, is because of evolution. That that was the initial idea. I've always wanted to do the proper levels, you know, standing up on two legs. But the world I was creating, it needed to be so that they'd evolved to adapt to humans. So they just look like normal wolves. They, you know, they're telepathic like all well, most wolves are. <laughs> they're telepathic with each other, anyway. In No Longer Human, it really focuses on the bond between Maker and Pup, as I call them. Uh, Maker being a person who bit a human, and Pup meaning a person who's been bitten. This is all explained in the book, um, but it focuses a lot on that and how that's stronger than anything. Their fur is the colour of their hair. So, as we heard, Rhea is chocolate brown hair with natural copper highlights. So, her fur would be that. Um, their eyes are all ember. You don't get your actual colour eyes. So yeah, that that's No Human, first chapter in the preface. And, the concept behind my wells. If you want to ask me anything then you can find me on my Twitter and all that, all the links will be somewhere, um, either in the description or you can find them in the description on my previous video. Um, if you want to ask me any questions then you can go onto one of those things and ask me there or you can ask me in the comments bit below. Um, my book is on sale so if you want it please go and buy it. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.